Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're going to talk about the KAT100 Auto Tuner from Elecraft. We're going to do a teardown and a theory of operation and maybe a little bit of beauty discussion. I don't know. Let's get over to the bench. This is the Elecraft KAT100 Auto Tuner. I want to take a look inside and I want to share that with everybody here just so we can all be on the same page of awesomeness together. I have my iFixit kit, which is going to be a couple of tricks going on here. First off, it's going to have a a little bit of space in here to sort out and store the different screws. And second, it's gonna have every screwdriver I can think of. We're gonna start out with a number two Phillips because that's what these look like. Oh, they're in there good. They're in there real good. And let's go down one more level, go down to a number one Phillips just in case because I don't wanna damage these screws. Now, is this a smart design where I only need to undo those two? Nope, I gotta take those feet off. So that's pretty slick. This holds the K2 transceiver on top of the tuner and then like match made in heaven. These screws are all in very tight. There we go, perfect. That's how I thought that would work. That is smart design, I like that. And this is very clean inside. Very nice inside. So this is the typical thing that you have going on with the auto tuner. There is a microprocessor right here. This is a pick, and so there's a way to program that. So it's it's processor plus programming. This is kind of like a precursor to a modern day Arduino. And then you have a series of inductors, and you have a series of capacitors along the front, along the back. And then these here are different relays. And so the way that this will work is when the SWR bridge, which is this guy right here, when this detects that the SWR is not what you'd like it to be, it will automatically go through and fire a relay to connect a capacitor and a toroid, and then it'll check. And if it's still bad, it'll fire another relay. It'll unlatch this one, latch this one, and check. And then it'll just go all the way down the line until it finds the exact right match that it's supposed to find. And you can swap in different values of capacitance and different values of inductance until you get that SWR match that you want. And this is kind of the exact same thing that you're doing with a manual tuner, where you tune the big knob, and that's the one that chunk, 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 chunks. That is your inductors. And you're turning that knob to get you a different tap off of a large coil inductor. And then you turn the other knobs and those are variable capacitors. I'll put a picture of a variable capacitor in here. And the way that the variable capacitor works is you're just dialing in and out different kinds of capacitance. Well, in order to do that with an automatic tuner, you would need to have some type of stepper motor and a variable capacitor and then a, a sensor to read it off. Or you can just turn this one on, turn this one on, turn this one on, turn them off and take some measurements as you go. This is extremely clean, extremely well done. I think we can get the bottom off the same way. Let me get the top back on and take the bottom off and we'll take a look at how the circuitry was done on the bottom. This was a kit that someone had built. That is some fantastic craftsmanship on both the kit builder's side of things and on the uh, kit maker's side of things. So we're gonna get these screws back in and we'll zip right on through to the other side. Oh, perfect. Again, beautiful design. I don't need to take off the, the two feet in the rear. I don't need to undo the, the two screws on each side in the front of the bale and then also the 4K screws. Those just stay there nice and neat for me, so nothing to worry about there. I like that design. Good looking solder work on the back here. Very clean. There's a little bit of splatter from the flux inside of the solder itself, the rosin core from inside of the solder. Do not bend relay leads, okay. It's a very typical thing to do when you put a capacitor in to put it through the board and fold the legs over so it holds itself in place. And in this case, uh, they just wanted to make sure that you knew when you put the relays in not to bend the relay legs over. But extremely clean on the outside. Uh, the tuner, you, you heard it in action, it's, it's not terribly loud. It is very fast on its tune. And overall, I think this is a great piece of kit. It does it does the thing and it looks pretty and it was elegantly designed. I am a I am a happy camper. All right, let's take a look at the back side of the tuner here. We have a 12 volt power input, we have an auxiliary RF input, we have a control input. This tuner needs to be controlled by some type of device. In my case it's going to be the K2 radio, but that will tell it which antenna to choose out of the two antenna ports that it has to choose from and it will tell it to tune or 
not to tune. So it will know what band it's on, and by knowing what band it's on, it can check some of its internal memories and go right back to that tune. So that's pretty good. A grounding lug, uh, RF input, this would be from your radio, and antenna one, antenna two. So you'd be able to run two different kinds of antennas here in case you had one that heard something better or one that had more gain or just wanted to test out two different antennas. Great design, takes up just the right amount of space and it looks very good because it is the same size, shape, and color as the K2 radio itself that I have to marry it up with. And they have this antenna tuner in a couple of different packages. There we go. The feet are lined up right, so they hold on and everything's nice and tight there. You did see on the bottom that there was a bale there, and that bale will allow you to have a nice operating position in front of the radio with it tilted up so you can see it. And here's the combination of the two together. And this is what I was talking about, about how they are the same dimensions, and they look like they were kind of meant to be together. I mean, you can tell it's an add-on, but at the same time, it doesn't look out of place. I've got some other radios where the tuner's wider, the tuner's taller, etc. And this, this is just a nice, nice little package. I'm glad you guys stopped by to take a look inside of the KAT100 tuner. There's a video right over here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.